Hi, everyone. My name is Kai Shimizu. It's an honor to be here in front of you all today. My project is called Algorithmic Couture, and it's a fashion project. But I want to introduce a little bit about myself before I introduce the project, because I'm not a fashion designer, but I'm working on a fashion project. I actually was born in Tokyo, Japan, but I moved to the States when I was little. I've always had an issue about my identity and about my background. I really didn't know who I was. So to cope with this, I really started to experiment with a lot of the cultures that I found in my environment. Really, nobody looked like me, nobody ate the same food as me, so I really started experimenting and trying to make things. Uh, this was me when I was four or five, playing with Legos, as many of you probably already have. And I think this picture right here of my childhood home kind of depicts what I had. On the left was tradition, my mom's side of the wall, where she had a photo of her in a traditional kimono dress and a purse that she had when she was little. And on the right was kind of experimentation. It was technology that I was so like, interested in. And I hung up my prized possession of a motherboard that I dissected from a computer. Two totally different things, tradition and experimentation. And it so became natural to me to try to experiment with code when I went into college. This is a program, a neural network program that I created uh, to create these kind of visuals. Using code allows me to create new tools for designers because I feel as designers, we are confined by the tools that we use. Another thing that I experienced when I went back to Japan was that there was a big culture shock. Really obvious things, such as like trash. I don't know if you know, but in America, trash is trash. If you have trash, you put it in the trash can. But in Japan, that trash was a pronoun. It was bio waste, it was plastic bottles, it was plastic cups, and all these like, little trash bins acted as tools for us to be more sustainable and more efficient with our waste. And I thought, why, why did this happen? Or how is this culture prevalent? Because I never experienced this in America. And when I looked into it, it was actually because in Japanese culture, we have a rich history in being sustainable. This is a picture of back in Edo era when samurais and ninjas were still a thing. People used to go to these fabric houses and recycle and get scraps of clothing to make on their own. And we, we've maintained this kind of high exemplary of sustainability throughout fashion in Japanese history. One big example is the kimono. The kimono is regarded one of the most beautiful garments in fashion history, but not many people know that it's really sustainable. Because the design of the kimono dress is that it utilizes straight cut patterns. It's almost composed solely of straight lines. There's no waste created in the fashion design process. And I think this is so totally different from how we view fashion today. The fashion industry is drowning in waste. We have created too much and we have sold too little. But when you think about it, why, why is this problem happening? And how does it happen over time? Well, when you really look at it, even if you're designing you know, a simple t-shirt, you need to make an S, an M, an L, an XL, because you don't really know who's going to wear it. So we're always designing and making things before we even sell the product. And it's also because in fashion history, we've always been a little bit confused about our bodies and this perception of beauty. You want to look big, but look you know, slim, a little bit sexy. And we've always been confused about this. These are statues by Brunard Rudofsky, which kind of illustrate the sexualization and the perceptions of the human body and what beauty was perceived to be like. And that meant, you know, really tight waist or being really slim. So we know that this linear model of fashion design isn't working out. What can we do to change it? Well, one thing that we can do is that we can uh, know a lot more about our users and even add them into the designing process 
by doing this, we're able to make sure that we're not creating stock. And that's a little bit about what algorithmic couture is. By utilizing 3D scanning technology software alongside CAD software, we're able to create um, bespoke garments for people. And then we optimize using machine learning algorithms to create a fashion design pattern that doesn't create waste. We then utilize this data alongside digital fabrication software so that we're creating to actually sell. So we don't create any stock. This ensures us so that we create bespoke garments for everyone, custom-made clothing that matches your body, not some standardized system. And that is my presentation. Thank you, Design and Album. <laughs>